Start first with the plenary algebra to describe the passage to the, uh, the category theory of plenary algebra. So, uh, a plenary algebra, maybe I should say, uh, a Euclidean plenary algebra, and for these purposes, uh, the things like unit parity and, and experimental and valuability and so on uh, are all irrelevant. Around a Cleveland kind of algebra is a pair of things that happens. And if you wanted to work in more generality, you can imagine plenty of algebras with many different shadings and you get many different things that happens. Or for that matter, plenty of algebra with just one shade. Okay, and just to remind you of the context, uh, if it comes from a sub factor, In set B, these are just the AA bimodules and the BB bimodules, or rather, those bimodules, since they're generated by taking tensor powers in those sets of BB bimodules. They may be just descriptions of different subcategories of the Okay, so what is this construction? Here's our algebra. Let me first define, uh, I'll, I'll do this in two steps. Maybe the second step is optimal. Uh, I'll just use the hat, which is indicating we're listening to the preliminary step at the moment. So C plus or minus uh, is the category. The objects just the natural numbers. And then morphisms. Vector space B B plus N plus or minus. So we're building the category C plus, and C plus here, so we're building the category C minus. And here's minus here. So just to remind you, these here, PN plus or minus, that's boxes with 2N plus 2N boundary points. And uh, if we think of that, Space of all boxes with uh, two endpoints sticking out the bottom, three endpoints sticking out the top. So 
unlike some uh, pessimists who've spoken previously, uh, time is running from the bottom. <laughs> okay. Now, as soon as I've written down this particular way of thinking of perspective space, uh, it's obvious how this becomes a tensor, how it becomes a category, and how it becomes a tensor category. If I have a hong from M to M, and after that a hong from M to K, there's an obvious planar operation of sticking blocks on top of each other, because there's composition in the category. And if we have a hong from A to B, and also a hong from C to D, we can stick the boxes side by side, and that's an obvious planar operation, among many parts of the planar operator, and that gives us the tensor product. A plus C is B plus C. Okay. So a composition and tensor from the planar operation. And then maybe I should actually say that it's not only a conoidal category, it's a rigid conoidal category. That is, every object here has a dual object in your evaluation, your show evaluation map, and those are just the top. So, uh, now this is a somewhat silly category. We didn't go far from planar algebra land. Our objects were always just natural numbers, regardless of what description of planar algebra we really had. And uh, we've been item voting completely. See, without that, without the hat, the item voting distribution in our sum space would be on there. That's what we just defined there. Is just saying that for each of these objects, if you look at its endomorphism space along from M to M, you, and then you look at all of the idempotents in that endomorphism algebra, and you promote all of the, all of the idempotents uh, to <coughs> objects in their own right. And so, going back to uh, answering the, the principal ground, simple objects uh, in this category plus minus corresponds even verse that is the vertices <laughs> even depth of the star to the corresponding component of the principal ground by the end plus So we needed to take the trivial step and put the simple object as corresponding to the simple object in the principal ground. Okay. Uh, what else do I want to say? Well there's not just this pair of categories, there's more. There are also bimodular categories. So, what do I mean by a, a bimodular category? Well, uh, they're, they're not tensor categories, but they're categories that these tensor categories act on. That is, there's a tensor product which takes an object in C plus along with an object in C plus minus and gives you another object in C plus minus. So you can put two in the, the categorization of the module. This category is acting on this, this, this module category. The C minus is acting on the C plus. And so just to make things definite, what are, what are these? The objects are now just odd natural numbers. Maybe uh, for consistency, I really should have said that objects here uh, were the even natural numbers, because there were all those even numbers pointing to the top and bottom here, I think it would match up a little better with what I said here. The objects are natural numbers, and Hong, 2n plus 1, 2n plus 1, is p n plus n p plus 1, uh, plus, and again, I think element of that, that planar algebra box space uh, with the appropriate number of swings up and down. And you can see that uh, it's, a, it's a category with a stack diagram vertically like this. We can't put two of these diagrams side by side. There's no tensor product because we're just an even number of swings. But you can put a picture from here next to a picture from here and you've got your boundaries. Okay. So starting with the planar algebra, we look at a pair of categories and a pair of bimodal categories between them. Say one more thing about bimodular categories. Uh, 
speaking on their usual equivalency, I glorified their usual equivalency. Now if you define all the notions here, you take C plus minus, on which C minus is acting on the left, you can tensor it over C minus. I'm not actually defining what this tensor product means, uh, but you can tensor it with C minus plus, on which C minus acts on the other side, and that's equivalent. That's what we get from a subtype of the new algebra. A pair of tensor categories in this dimension of equivalent. And that's really the, the general situation we need to keep. I've only described one direction of the translation now, uh, so far, but I'm now talking about going back the other way. So let's forget the new algebra for the moment and just think tensor uh, in terms of tensor categories. An algebra. rather than giving it a silly name like infinite multiplication, uh, is the map in this instance. Yeah, obviously the map in the end is just right, in these conditions. Uh, and since I've drawn uh, a multiplication map the diagram, it's easy to say what the condition is. The condition is just that we have an associative algebra object. So it's easy just pictures to interpret in a tensor category in the usual way, maybe it's just C2 parts of pictures side by side, that means take the tensor product of those maps. The lower half of that diagram is just a multiplication map tensored with the identity on A, and then when you see C2 above each other, you see both maps. So these are both maps from A to say to A X. So that's algebra. And the uh, module. The line object M to the map. I'm going to draw a squiggling line to indicate the object M to the module, and a straight line still to this object A, which we just need to have a map from A to say M back to the And it has to satisfy the obvious rule. As soon as we've got those two notions, we can uh, collect them all together and look at the category of all A modules. Now, when I'm saying it forms a category, I need to tell you what the maps between these projects are. And so Equation satisfied by a, uh, a map from a module M to a module N. It's the obvious thing. Well, let's, let's specialize just a little bit now. Let's just, this is just nonsense that works in any old tensor category. We're always going to be working. Uh, in a, in a uh, unitary rigid tensor category. So rigid just means uh, the objects have jewels and you have chops and caps and you draw maxima and minima on the lines. So unitary means there's a star operation. You can think of it as reflection diagrams. So let me just add a maxim to algebra from now on. We're working with a unitary. Also ask that we've taken the, uh, the algebra of multiplication and rotated around, so we just get the usual, uh, the usual multiplication, and also the star multiplication. 
and maybe at this point we should be calling you know, algebras, or treating as algebras in different categories. But I'm just going to ignore that and see if it doesn't matter or be useful. I'm just going to continue calling them algebras because they're, they're really adding to the Is it like smart form research in order to make this? Ah, sorry, sorry. Yep, 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 yep. So I should, um, uh, yep, so I should reflect things. Um, So then the, in fact, I'm not going to give you a, uh, a detailed account of it, but if you have, if you start with an ambient unitary rigid uh, tensor category, and you have a nice algebra object in this way, then A mod A, that is the AA bimodules, well, I haven't defined for you what a bimodule is, but you can draw the obvious pictures right away. Uh, a mod A is a category of bimodules. Again, a unitary rigid. Doesn't work to check all the details. Okay, now I think we can make contact with the story uh, up above again. If we started with some plane of algebra and we built the tensor categories, just let's think about C plus for a moment. We built the tensor category C plus. Well, can we find an algebra of it? Yes. So, starting with an algebra, plus, we see that, uh, well, that uh, this object in, uh, in C plus one in brackets. Just to emphasize that it's not the tensor identity of the category, which is kind of awkward, but the number one is an actual number, so it's not the same as the tensor identity. The tensor identity is zero. So I'm going to use brackets to keep that separate there. See, this object one we built over there has an actual algebra structure. Show you the map. What is it? It's just a map. Uh, part of uh, just a diagram, a simple lead diagram. It's always there in any kind of algebra. If you uh, go back and check the, uh, how the indexing work, that diagram really does count as a map from one to some one else. So that's one, and you can see trivially it satisfies the, the associative capacity of this one. Okay? So now we've got more. Starting from a plane of algebra, not only did we build this pair of tensor categories into the final degree between them, the tensor category C plus came with a, a God-given algebra of it. Okay. So let's uh, look here. This is a diagram of C three plus. Okay, so let's keep that uh, in mind for the moment and uh, now explain the general story of building a shaded plane of algebra out of a tensor category and, and a uh, So at least one shaking ketchup here as well. Good. Everyone else is bored. Okay. Okay, so given the inclusion of algebras, look, I'm suddenly sounding like I might be talking about subtaxes. Uh, inside B, we see the tensor category, which we have seen now, we can extract the shaded plane of algebra. Some notation before we do this to make life a little bit less confusing. Let's write x for b dog of as an a b bimodule. Okay, so it's just like yeah. the inclusion. Ah, okay. Yeah, what is an inclusion? Uh, so 
So uh, I guess we didn't even say uh, what a map of algebra is, but a map of algebra is sort of the obvious diagram. And so here um, we can we can just I mean we can just say that A is a subobject of B, because that subobject is, is a category, so that the inclusion map is a map of algebra. One, one great thing to keep in mind is that uh, Beth is a method category satisfying all these conditions we've mentioned so far, and we're just talking about the theory of finite dimensional algebra, which uh, is C in Beth. And generally, we should be thinking that C is some fusion category, that is a method category with, with uh, finite and simple objects. This is not much worse than the theorem of homogeneity in Beth, when running is still a very finite thing. Finite dimensional vector spaces. Uh, okay, so just to like a little bit easy notationally, x must be as an AB binomial, where the binomial attributes here are of course just the multiple of AB. Okay. And uh, if I've got some object V, which is say a, a CD binomial, C and D are always going to come from the set AB, and I want to write this notation for an alternating tensor product. So I'm writing a hat here to get a sort of funny tensor product. Um, it occurs to me that I've cheated here. I've not said something in fact. Okay. Um, okay. So this alternating tensor product can be drawn by taking copies of V, if you take the dual of every second one, remember we're assuming a category V is an absolute dual object, we tensor them all together, but we tensor them over the algebra that are absolute. So we can here V is a right V module, and V dual is a right L over left V module, and so for me, we've got C here as this V. Now I haven't said Maybe just tell you a very small. I'll, I'll tell you the, the baby steps for defining the tensor product of module objects. And this is only really half the story. But say uh, uh, we've got M, a right A module, and M, a left A module. And M tensor over A, N, is just a vector space. The cheap way to say it is that it's just the vector space of, um, of homes in the category C from, uh, sorry, homes, not homes in the category C, homes as, uh, what is the name of the problem? Uh, left A modules from uh, M to M. So I'm claiming a few things here. You've got a right A module in the sense as long as your category is rigid, its dual is actually your left A module. We talked about what morphisms of modules were, so this is just some vector space. So this is my definition of the tensor product. Now, if these M's and N's here were both actually bimodules and there were other categories acting on the other side, you could do a fancier version of this, and you could say what internal home was. Sorry, I'm being sarcastic. But you can, if there are other algebras acting on the other sides, you can do this in such a way that this applies. something to think about in there. Uh, and, uh, we get and this, of course, this whole thing here was a, well, a C something module, depending on whether we look at uh, an even or odd number of factors involved in this here. Okay. So what, what is this kind of algebra now? Well, C N plus is going to be to be the vector space of AA bimodule morphisms, and A is a bimodule in itself, with alternating tensor power with two n factors of x. And remember, this is an AB bimodule, so once you put two n tensor power, it means that's a combination of 
That's a, that's this again. Okay. So here, starting with an, the inclusion of algebra in the central category, we built some shaded and of algebra, and the claim is really just following your nose. Uh, is that starting with uh, a the the zero extreme object in uh, in uh, C plus and B the one extreme object. But of course, the potential identity is always an algebra in obvious ways. Uh, so here, if you look at this inclusion of the trivial algebra, inside this God-given algebra that we have here, uh, we recover the kind of algebra we saw. So this is just a description of how to translate back and forth between uh, shaded kind of algebra that they've talked about and pairs of algebra objects. Uh, yeah, no, no, I, sorry, I didn't say it, but at the point where I added these extra axioms, I, I redefined uh, algebra between trivial and trivial. So these, these axioms are just you know, uniquely between trivial and trivial. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly a fun game to follow the rules to see where these axioms get you. Okay. So, C minus is good enough. Is this something I've never seen before, Phil? Or is this What's that? I'm a little puzzled. Do I know this from somebody I know? Or? Um, yeah, we, 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 we've been talking about it in your seminar for some years. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, well, okay, so uh, what can I suggest? Um, so, I think this story is, is sort of, is, is a lot of people have known bits of a long time. Um, I think a good source for reading a lot of it, uh, and, uh, and where a lot of the details are, are what people talk about properly, um, is in the New York Times. There are some various papers about this sort of, this sort of translation. Um, but you also, some of it you uh, uh, get that from other people. So, well, hang on. You start with a plane algebra, then you get an algebra object, and it's in another plane algebra. Yeah, and then I'm just, I'm just telling you the two directions. Well, the, the, the subtract is nowhere in sight. I mean, we're, uh, we're, um, if we start off from a subtract of another plane algebra, an algebra object of another plane algebra, and then the subtract is also another plane algebra. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, well, it's the same plane algebra. I mean, the plane algebra we're going back and forth with. Oh, yeah. In the new one, it's constructed from an, some al weirdo algebra object in the new one. An algebra object in the tensor category reads back and forth. Oh, I see. Yeah. So I'm just saying that. Shaded plane algebra is okay. just the same as okay. algebra objects in the tensor category, with a sort of bridge adjectives on either side. Uh, yeah, let, let me keep going, and I'll, I'll uh, there is there is some good stuff. And it's possible that quantum subgroup has changed in meaning over time, uh, and uh, these days I think most people are using quantum subgroup to talk about commutative algebra. Uh, so, from this point of view, uh, we should think about where you get algebra objects from. I mean, if, we, if I hand you some tensor category that I, that, that I like for some reason and ask you what algebra objects are there, what can you do? Let's do a sort of silly uh, construction of an algebra object. V dual tensor V is always an algebra. Multiplication map is the multiplication map we used a moment ago. You can take two copies of V dual tensor V and just pair up the inner V and V dual. And it's pretty obvious that that's going to satisfy associativity. 
And the construction above simplifies. Said Pn plus is home. We can forget about home as a primary order since it's taking the normal, the, the, the standard home uh, in the category we're working with now. But one in this alternating tensor power of V itself. And Pn minus the same as Pn. Okay? So th that's a description there. Uh, I mean, the algebra objects have all been edited back out again. Just any, given any object. Unitary tensor category, you can build a plane of algebra by taking by the Okay? So the a typical example of that is that uh, we have U2G uh, had a unit of unity. Maybe a quantum group with a unit of unity. Uh, well, and semi simplified, not you semi triplified, this is a semi simple uh, gradient. Q is a root of unity plus to one. Uh, you know, two pi i over n, or two pi i k over n. Uh, unitary, that's uh, in, in this language, say, uh, Peter Benzel, uh, in this one reality. Um, and, uh, and then this construction here is just taking your favorite uh, picking any simple object that survives at that root of unity is still the same planar algebra. This is just what's called the quantum group subplane. And in particular, over here, that means we've now realized uh, two of these guys. And uh, yeah, so those guys there are just quantum group subplanes. Uh, it's something a little bit funny that goes on. Because of this way that we take B B U or B B U or B B U or here, I'm just going to do a little example of that. So say we start with the Fibonacci category. The objects here are just one and x, and x squared is isomorphic to one plus x. So if you're going to draw the, the principal graph of this tensor category, uh, it would just be the tadpole graph. So one goes x. Multiply x by itself using this copy of one and this copy of x. But when you do this construction on x, because you're putting in a shading, in a thing that didn't have a shading before, you get uh, you get the A4 subfactor. You can think of as sort of covering that principle graph. So I don't want to explain the detail of that, but for anyone who's never seen construction before. That's a great example of this thing in the tensor plane. What's that? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yes, this example here, we have left with a root of unity. Yes, the BBA series goes on forever. Okay. So that's quantum groups and groups of unity. Let's now talk about uh, what I would call a quantum subgroup. Slightly different construction, but very closely related. So we started with that if our ambient category C happens to be graded, for example, the representation theory of the quantum group, then we can look at commutative algebra. satisfying one extra relation, if you grade the two inputs before multiplying them, that's just the same as uh, as normal. Now, you can work in, in more generality with this if you want to, and this will maybe be important for realizing a few examples here. If your category weren't graded, but you had some algebra object that whipped into the center of your tensor category, you know what object those mean? Then you can still ask for this condition, some object that whips into the center. 
and everything they say will, will follow. So uh, an algebra object in the non-rated category that happens to look the same as the category. And that will be important to uh, the next time. Okay. So now, uh, obviously, the category of modules is still exactly the same as it was before, uh, but it now becomes a Previously, there was no there was no no tensor product structure on modules of an algebra. What is a tensor product? Well, the tensor product of a number of objects is just the tensor product of the underlying objects. But now I need to tell you an action map how the algebra A acts on the tensor product. So I'm going to do like this. A I draw that circle to indicate that A is acting on E and N at the same time. And the picture I need to draw is this one. So here A is acting on E and N. So first of all, I need to show two multiplications. That is, because uh, I'm in a, in a rigid category, this is just something built out of multiplication and custom caps. So I put A into two copies of A, and then I use the gradient to use one copy of A across N, and then I just use the underlying action map for N to E. And as an exercise, this is this is uh, this is the mechanism for the associative, which is really an action. Uh, and maybe as a hint, if you try that and get something wrong, uh, or rather if you try this and it doesn't work, um, the hint is. Uh, this definition I gave only really works if I, if I was able to normalize the algebra map in such a way that algebra by and also has two multiplications of the same map. And certainly you can do that through algebras. Otherwise, you can just puzzle out with algebras. Okay, so um, let's see what happens here. So A Eleven. There are uh, eleven simple objects. You take the first one and the last one and the third last one and take their direct sum, and it happens in an algebra space. Okay. And uh, category of a one. Unshaded G6 Okay, so that's an example of how you build uh, E6 and E8, realizing you try this, this quantum subgroup construction, and uh, we'll see another example in just a moment. Uh, you can also do the Gs, but the same. Honestly, you should. Uh, I mean, this is not. If you wanted to, if I wanted to show you E6 is about as cheap as we possible, I wouldn't do this. Okay. I'm just all I want to claim is that those those examples fit into this this setup, not this setup. But you could also do that as an algorithm. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, my computer has done this in the past. It's just some finite matrix and some previous and some principal matrix. It's finitely much linear algorithm. Ah, 
Did I get the wrong object? <laughs> um, So, where else can you get algebra objects from? Subgroup H is an actual degraded vector space that gives you all the group subgroup subfactors. And similarly, thinking about algebra objects and representation categories actually also gives you all the uh, just by thinking about finite dimensional, uh, no, thinking about the representation categories of finite groups, the Spencer categories and looking for algebra objects there, you get a pretty good idea. Okay. So another source is an internal form, which we can talk about, but I'll mention briefly now. So uh, M is a module category of C, just be careful here, this is not the same as a module object over an algebra object, this is a category which has a tensor product taking objects in C and objects in M, so this is uh, this category is very different from the module. Uh, but M is a module category, M1 and M2 are objects in that module category, Internal home from M1 to M2 uh, is an object in C. Uh, and I'll just say what it's characterized by and not explain at all why we think it exists. Uh, but we can take the home, the, the, the homes in the ambient category C from some object like X in C uh, to the internal home. That is a vector space, it's just isomorphic. The homes in the module category from X tensor M1, but X acting on M1. Okay. So there's this internal home construction. And the point is that internal isomorphisms is always an algebra. Now we can pick up one more guy in this list. Uh, e6 is a module category over A11. That's the consequence of what we observed over there. If I only had looked up what the algebra object called Garson was getting. Um, and we can just look at N of the tensor identity in E6. That's some new object in A11, which very naturally, by this internal homomorphism construction, has an algebra structure. Okay? And uh, the module, well, sorry, uh, the subfactor we get from that by looking at um, the inclusion of the trivial, uh, is it, this isn't a commutative algebra object in A11 in some sense, but it's an algebra object. So if we follow the construction before, and look at this inclusion, Trivial algebra into that amorphism algebra. This gives QT11. And in fact, you can interpret uh, all of the GHK subfactors as a function of that result. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to uh, skip constructing a QT6. 
here and just uh, uh, remind you that it's not even telling us about constructions uh, of, uh, of quadratic self factors and, uh, and remind you that these guys here are all quadratic. Pattern and quotients I meant to talk about today, but it's not clear whether I'll get there. Maybe I'll defer that to tomorrow. We're almost done. Uh, for 4442 and 2D2 subfactors, if you remember, uh, I mentioned right at the beginning of when I first mentioned these that you could get them uh, as fixed. Well, 4442 comes as fixed points in one of the 2D2 subfactors, and one of the other 2 d comes as fixed points in 2D2. But these are really just, if you, if you remember this, uh, the same construction that gets a B to the A, we can use in these guys uh, from, from these quadratic subfactors. And we just have these ones left. So, uh, today we told you a little bit about the, we told you a fair amount about the construction of the extended hardware of planar algebra. But it's a really miserable construction. Extremely brute force. You just have to go looking out in the graph planar algebra. <coughs> you, you, you get some clues about what sub algebra in the graph planar algebra you're meant to be looking for. Eventually, by solving lots of polynomials, you find it. And then there's an exciting bit of this jelly fish algorithm that, that proves that what you found is actually what you're looking for. But uh, it's sort of a, it's an extremely brute force construction that has no connection with anything else in the universe, apparently. Unlike what we're seeing here, that everything else uh, is somehow related. What about a SEDA algorithm? Uh, we told them quite a bit. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean. Well, okay, okay. <laughs> it's, I'm certainly looking forward to a better one. So the, the one the remaining thing that now we're just giving up on extended hardware and discuss uh, is a SEDA hardware, which we still quite recently I would have put in the same bucket as extended hardware. Uh, we put them in the drawer set. Oh no, eventually we did. I mean, I mean, I think they're uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're very similar. To all, uh, all known constructions of this one can also sort of all known methods that get you here can also get you here. Uh, and it's, it's, it's that kind of thing. But now there's a nice construction of state hardware. And so in the last couple of minutes, I want to tell you uh, about that. So I think there's, there's this great question now that, um, that Noah Snyder and Pinot Grossman uh, have done a lot of work on, on answering. But just <coughs> what are all the algebra? What are all the algebras? Your favorite tensor categories, or maybe let's say your favorite fusion categories. So as soon as you find the inside C, as soon as you find some algebra object A. As soon as you find some algebra object A, that immediately gives you some uh, some new unitary tensor category, the, the AA binomial. Okay, maybe you find B, you get also some of these, and then sometimes it may turn out that it's easier to notice an algebra object over here. But uh, and in some sense, all of these bits of the picture are all kind of the same. All of the as soon as you have this algebra object A. Uh, the, the left A modules and the right A modules give you a Merida equivalence between these two unitary tensor categories. And you're all just sort of they're, they're looking at the elephant from different sides. There's one tail and a few trunks and so on. Uh, but 
don't tend to take all the money in the same office. And you shouldn't necessarily <coughs> found in your business academy. You really should try and explore the long reader equivalence class. Uh, another way of saying that is understand all of the arguments that make the business academy. Uh, so I think this is something we will uh, work later in uh, in other years as we have maximum factors to think about the business academy. But just for this time, I'll leave the main point for now. Okay. So uh, what's been done in this respect? Well, uh, you also know I've worked out the complete story for the, the Hogwarts Temple category, where there's one other category, so that an extra month later someone can do a completely different setting for the different category. Uh, and then uh, they discovered, you know, a paper from a few years ago, they explained part of the Maria equivalent. So say to Harvard, that is, they identified a lot of algebra objects in there. They weren't quite sure they had everything. And then just recently they've, they've, they've sorted that out uh, along, uh, along with deduction. And uh, that discovery of the, the, the time reader equivalence class of, uh, of the state of Harvard, uh, revealed a, uh, a, a nice construction as it relates to the, to the rest of the universe. So first of all, uh, let me say, There's only one of them left in the room if it happens to be a plug. <laughs> if a plug is not there. Okay. Um, okay. So they constructed a uh, an object from which we did a bunch of things like this. They constructed a quadratic <coughs> subfactor based on this group Tedmo 4 across all one series. And what they showed is that the uh, well, so this has worth of, of one-dimensional objects in this different category, the potential product of all these different values of multiplication. And if you look at the subcategory of invertible objects, you look at the, uh, the Z12 that's sitting inside the Z14, which is about the max of the number, which is wrong. Uh, but this subcategory here uh, lifts to the center. Not that one. Ah, okay. <laughs> which one is it? Okay. Z12 lifts to the center, and we can see a covariance value by it. That is, uh, that is to do this construction here of, uh, of, of module objects for this, for this not commutative algebra object, but our algebra that lifts to the center, uh, obtaining a, sub a new subfactor. Like, uh, like, a, like a Hargrove type subfactor or, or, or one of these three of the GP subfactors, except sort of split in the middle. And where there was usually only one object in the center of the three GP, there would be two objects. And now, the way I'm presenting it is just claiming that there happen to be some algebras in here, but uh, their construction shows you why these objects I'm naming. Really do have constructed as algebras. So there can be a labor of vertices here. There's one in X, A to the B, B squared and B cubed. So this is Z14 of uh, the invertible objects. We'll be able to work it out from what I've seen here. Yeah, okay. so hard to understand why 1 plus x must have a, an algebra structure that has to be. Maybe not. But we'll leave that to them. This is 
Okay. Uh, it's a bit complicated algebra. Is that uh, the first one is made of algebra, built from the conclusion of algebra. Uh, if you say that, I'll be So I think this is wonderful. Obviously, I don't know the details, but uh, that this now shows that uh, as long as you're willing, this is that you're around in your equivalence class and things that you knew about beforehand, then it's data hybrid. It also relates to the simple problems, and in particular, this sort of this quadratic, this idea of the quadratic computer strategy uh, has a bit more reach than you might have expected. 